Hello everybody, it is Caden here from Kepler Electronics, and welcome to my dissection of the new Vex Robotics game. It is called Change Up, and today we're going to be talking about it. In an effort to make this a little bit less boring than the previous two years that I've done this, I'm going to be just shoving some footage of me grinding a wedge for my combat robot stomp bot behind it. You can really ignore it. I'll also be intersplicing some pictures from the game manual in between this. So, let's get into it. So, Vex launched a lot of new stuff. Not only did they launch the new game Change Up, but also a new competition type called Vex AI with no driver control and a whole bunch of new sensors for this game type. There's not a ton of information about this right now, but that does look incredibly interesting, especially as it should allow 3D printing and machining for high school teams. Let's get to the main Vex game. This game is sort of like tic-tac-toe. Your goal is to place balls from your team's color into these tubes which have a sort of open space at the bottom. You can push the ball out from the bottom, maybe pull it out, it looks like it might be a little too tight for that, but you can't take them out from the top. You can really only fit three balls inside each, with either three balls going straight up or two on the bottom and one on the top, as the balls need to be partially inside this bottom ring and completely below the top ring. Once you have more balls than your opponent in the goal, that is considered owned by your team, and if you have three owned goals in a row, that's worth six points. But each ball on its own is also worth one point. Certain goals have balls in them at the start, it looks like everything's balanced to start out. This game is basically Turning Point version 2 with the constant flip-flopping of scoring from Turning Point. Except it gets rid of the fast-paced launching and replacing it with the more strategy-based elements from Tower Takeover. I'm kind of assuming that it's going to be pretty strategy based where you kind of have to decide what you're going to go for where your opponent's going to go for very much like the tower strategy that was in uh tower takeover so you guys start in a home row which is basically the six field tiles on your side of the field and that's where you start you got to be touching the wall just like previous years and the autonomous line is back, and since it's been here for three years, it's probably going to be back forever. I know a lot of people that uh, run tournaments up in my area are pretty big fans of the autonomous line because it gets rid of the common just drive across the field and screw up your opponent's autonomous. It gets rid of that strategy, which was a pretty cheap strategy, if I'm going to be honest. Autonomous is worth six points, uh, and there's also an extra permanent point if you can score a point in your whole home row. So if you get that row that's uh, right next to where you start, that means that you get an extra point. So possible seven points in Autonomous, which can't be taken away, which is pretty good. It seems like Vex is actually trying to go for a very um, fast-paced sort of flip-flopping thing recently. That's how the past... Uh, Three games have really been counting this one, and Starstruck was kind of like that too. But it seems like they're kind of trying to intersperse more elements of strategy in it with the towers from Tower Takeover and from uh, Change Up. But let's talk build strategy, because that's always the most important part of this whole game. So there really is no expansion limits anymore, which means that Wallbots are back. Although there were really only a few teams that tried that last year, uh, I know my team tried it. Uh, we probably could have built a better Wallbot, but it wasn't tremendously powerful. But it does mean that there's the potential for uh, teams to grab an entire goal and then block it off from the other team. Uh, there is some interesting stuff with uh, ball maxes. So you can hold... It seems like you can hold an unlimited number of balls of your team's color. Uh, be sure to say something in the comments if that is wrong, because there's a pretty good possibility that it might be, because I couldn't find anything when I was looking over the rules. But there is a hard limit on how many balls you can carry of the opposing team's color. You can carry three balls of the opposing team's color um, at a maximum. And if you have three, then you really just got to get them all out of your... Uh, your robot, you can't be doing anything else besides just trying to expel them from your robot. And if you and another robot are trying to go and block the balls, you can't be holding any more than six. Otherwise, you have to do the same thing and try and get rid of them. So, my current strategy is sort of intake rollers because that seems to be a really easy way to do these. Uh, to pick up these balls. They're actually enormous. They're six in a they're six point three inches in diameter, which is pretty big. That's uh, about the same size as uh, no, it'd be about one and a half times a cube if my rough math is holding up. 
but they're really big. And what I'm thinking is sort of a magazine that the balls will feed into. If you can't really do a tray stacker, so you got to do something where it's got another face on it. And what I'm kind of thinking is something like a magazine that holds the balls and can pivot to move the balls up to the scoring position and has rollers all along both sides. The other thing that I was thinking is potentially like a sort of U-shaped or C-shaped thing that can kind of hold the balls and you just intake and keep intaking and it'll just bring it all the way up to the top where you can then drop it into a goal. You need to have some sort of like a flip out mechanism or something. Um, I think that's where it's going to go towards the end of the year because if you can get that working, it seems pretty rock solid because you just pick up balls. You can have as many balls in there as you need and you just pick them up, feed them, bring them up, and then you can just kind of start feeding them in at the same time as you're maybe even taking them out. But that's going to be pretty uh, that's gonna be a pretty big deal because these things aren't exactly short you need some sort of like a lift or something probably like a flip out mechanism to get this thing working but that seems like a pretty valid strategy um, another more risky strategy that I didn't see anything in the rules about uh, is shooting balls so we could go all the way back to turning point and actually start shooting the balls um, that's very risky because of course these are all the goals are on the outside of the field and there are rules about throwing them outside of the field. There's no net or anything, but there are sort of like backboards on the goals, except for the center goal that you might be able to kind of launch balls at and bounce them into, but that could be a potentially uh, high scoring strategy. Although you'd need to clear the ball out beforehand, so that could potentially be a problem. This game looks really interesting. It seems like the kind of game that is either going to be very much like Tower Takeover where there's one meta and everyone's following it, which was the Tray Stacker. I'm kind of surprised they went for something so similar to Tower Takeover, especially because the metas, like the meta seems that it could be so similar, like aside from the whole strategy changing thing. It's also interesting that they decided to go with a hard plastic uh, game element for the, what, third year in a row? Fourth year in a row. Yeah, fourth year in a row. Dang. I was kind of predicting something foam or something like a beanbag or something, but I don't know. guess that was wrong. But it is interesting because this could either go like very meta or it could be very much like a tower takeover where there's a multitude of designs that can all kind of hold up on their own. But uh, that's really all I have to say on the matter. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this short little dissection of the game, and I hope you enjoy. Uh, thanks for watching, and be sure to stay tuned, because I'm planning on building some sort of early season designs. So be sure to subscribe and stay around for that. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.